should be like a hockey game. Just give me a. Somebody's gonna give me a something. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Living Branches Church. And apparently, we're online, so hi, guys out there. And hi, guys in here, because you're important too. And uh, we're just going to do some worship, so I'll get you all to stand with each other. Because <laughs> I'm not standing. I'd say with me, but I'm not standing. And uh, let's just open with a word of prayer. Father God, I just thank you that you're here with us today and that you dwell in the presence of your people. I, uh, we just welcome you, your Holy Spirit, in today to come and speak with us and to do whatever you want. And... We just dedicate this service to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. I did this song a couple weeks ago um, on the video, 
and I just think it's kind of pertinent and so we got a new song today and I hope the words are up there Can't go back to the beginning Can't control what tomorrow will bring But I know here in the middle Is the place where you promised to be As I walk now through the valley, let your love rise above every fear. Like the sun shaping the shadow in my weakness, your glory. you come will you meet me here again cause all I want is all you
Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? of him. 
never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see you working. Even when I don't feel that you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I
Cause you are worthy of it all You are worthy of it all For from you are all things And to you are all things You deserve the glory You are worthy of it all Good morning, everyone. You can have a seat. It's so good to see you all. Welcome to church. Welcome to the time that we can spend together, and it's so good uh, to see everyone, but also for those of you who are online, we just want to welcome you, uh, and I sure uh, hope that you've enjoyed your time of worship this morning. I know I have, and it's always good. There's something about being in the church in the, in, with the rest of the body to be able to sing together and to worship. Uh, I find that there's something that goes on when we're together, and there's that, that common heart that raises their voice. I know you can sing when you're online. I know you can do that, but it's also something about uh, being together with the rest of the body. Well, I just want to say uh, thank you for uh, coming, and here we are this morning again, and I want to start just like I've done in the last couple weeks. Uh, I believe this is the last time with uh, Unite 714. I'm not sure exactly if they're going to continue on, but this week again we're going to start with a prayer. And this time of prayer again as we just continue with the rest of the world. And so I'd like to invite you to stand with me and there's a couple of scriptures and then we're going to pray. Give ear and hear my voice. Give attention and hear my speech. Does he who plows for sowing, plow continually? Does he continually open and harrow his ground? When he has leveled its surface, does he not scatter dill, sow cumin, and put in wheat in rows and barley in its proper place, and emmer as the border? For he is rightly instructed. His God teaches him. Isaiah 28, verses 23 to 26. And then Acts verse one, chapter 1 and verse 8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Let's pray. Lord, we know that even in the midst of the pain and loss of COVID-19, the Holy Spirit is at work. This terrible pandemic is being used so oft, so, to soften uh, the spiritually, the spiritual, cr and to put spiritual crust over the hearts of the world's peoples. What the enemy has meant for evil has actually served to deepen, to deeply plow on our own hearts, as well as those of our fellow citizens. Only you, God, can bring redemption out of destruction. Heavenly Father. In the name of your son, Jesus, we ask that the hearts of men, women, and children around the world would be freshly opened to the message of the gospel. Lord, we, thank, we are thankful that the seasons of plowing and harrowing do not last forever. In this hour, many of our friends, neighbors, and loved ones have become more receptive to the gospel. It is time for us to go and sow. Give us the love and wisdom we need to effectively sow the seeds of the gospel into the broken lives of those around us. Heavenly Father, fill us afresh with the Holy Spirit's power so that we can boldly proclaim your word. Lord, as your spirit is freshly poured out on our world, we ask you to continue to, to mitigate COVID-19. We pray 
for your protection over doctors, nurses, first responders, and all those who serve the public day after day. We also, thank, we also ask you to grant supernatural wisdom to those working to develop a vaccine. However, as much as we are grateful for the healthcare professionals and first responders, our hope is ultimately in you. Therefore, we rise up, united in prayer with one voice, saying, Heavenly Father, in your name, in the name of your Son, Jesus, please eradicate COVID-19 from the earth and heal our land. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. This past Friday, we went out and we walked actually a fairly big portion of the community. And uh, every other Friday, we are going to be going out to pray. And just as we prayed this morning with, uh, with Unite 714, it's our desire to see men and women come to know Jesus Christ. Their hearts are open. There's that sense of loss. There's that sense. And the prayer that we want to continue to pray towards is this, is that they would come alive. And life comes through Jesus Christ. Amen? Life comes through Jesus, and we want people to come to know Jesus, to know the Savior, because it's only in Christ that we can continually walk in life. And so what we want to do is we want to encourage you, not this Friday, but the following Friday, which I believe would be July the 3rd. Hard to believe it's already July. We thought it was... we came in at the beginning of May and we're leaving uh, to now at the end of June and we'll be going into the end to the beginning of July. So where did that all go? I don't know. But uh, yeah, it, that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, this morning, uh, just like uh, the rest of the times, we've been talking about uh, our mission. June is our mission month and we start talking about the whole idea of what is the purpose, what are we doing? And mission is to, that we might reach and help people Find and follow after God. And we want to have our attitude that is, is epic. I don't know if you remember, I talked about having an epic attitude, which is every person encountering Christ. It's our desire that every person, whether it's through prayer, whether it's through worship, fellowship, outreach, or discipleship, it is our desire both the, the non-believer and the believer might encounter Christ and experience His presence. Because it's his presence that makes the difference. When Jesus shows up in any time, it makes a difference. Amen? It makes a difference in our lives. It made the difference in so many lives. And what we want to be doing is we want to be open in our own lives to be able to walk and become more uh, open and, and carrying the presence of God in every place that we go. So that's something that we do. Every, during the month of June, we talk about uh, those, the, our mission statement. And also, we recognize those who have volunteered over this last year. And, and it's really important that we take the time because volunteers aren't always recognized. Volunteers aren't always appreciated. We don't say thank you enough to those who have, uh, have served voluntarily. Uh, so this morning, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about those who ha have worked behind the scenes not just in the PowerPoint and all that, but there's also those who work behind the scenes serving in the area of ministry. And so this morning, I want to bring your attention to one like Arshin, who, have, who has stepped up to the plate and she is working as leading the women's ministry in the church. And so there's different groups and as things happen within the church, they are, that we contact and then we start to serve one another. And so we just want to appreciate those that work alongside with our sheen as they do this. And then the other one is for, for home, home Bible studies. Do you know there's been two home, stu home Bible studies that's been going on this last year. And one of them was in Matt and Lisa's home. And they've opened their home and they welcome people and they start to walk through. And when it comes into Matt and Lisa's home, it is also an opportunity to build fellowship and relationship. And it's about praying for one another. And then the other one is that, was at Amy's in my place. And then we went, had to go online. And that was a whole different scenario. And then, uh, so all of this goes on. But those are the individuals that we want to appreciate today 
who have also stepped up to the plate and held home Bible studies. And the next group that I want to give thanks to, and this is one that uh, we hear about, but not always, not, not in a regular basis. We hear about them, we know that they're there, but we don't always understand or see all that they do. And the group that I'm talking about is our leadership team. You need to be very thankful for your leadership team who uh, work together to walk, walk beside this and, and to pray and seek God on how to, how to lead this church. Uh, and those ones that are on the leadership team is Hank and Helen and Francis and Scott and Doug and then myself. And together, we work together and we, we meet together every second Tuesday and we will pray. I want you to know that we don't just sit there and just go through business. We take time to worship and to pray together and to seek God. And they have spoken into this, the, the area of this church and, and, and ways in which we can uh, serve you. And so I want you to be aware and to give thanks to them. And this next, in this last while, we've also taken the step to uh, look at the five pillars, the prayer. Uh, Helen has taken on the job of, of helping to oversee the area of prayer in our church. Worship. Doug has stepped up. And he says he's just going to oversee and he's going to keep connected with all those that are doing the worship and uh, the PowerPoint. So those ones who are working in those areas, uh, you can talk with Doug. Uh, fellowship. I know that Kelly, you are in charge of fellowship and, and Scotty has stepped up and he's going to work with you. And, and how do we build fellowship within this church? Um, outreach. And outreach, we know, is very important but not always seen but uh, Frances, her heart is for, for outreach. And so she's taking that step to help lead this and to, to bring direction. And then discipleship. And in discipleship, Hank's heart is into, in discipleship. And so in this next year, as we start to move ahead, I want you to know that those are the areas and that you can talk to these ones on our leadership team. And that uh, if you feel that there's any section or those of you who are online and you feel like there's something that you want to be a part of, these are the people that you can contact. And so you can contact them or get a hold of me and get a hold of their phone numbers if you don't have them. And before we uh, go to the next one, what we do also is we like to bring attention to one of the missionaries that we uh, sponsor or help. And last week we had Josh and Chelsea. And we had them on the big screen and they were able to share a little bit about what's going on. And this morning, we've got, we're going to bring Dave McElhenney and he works with Nehemiah Construction. And he does, they do water wells over in northern Kenya with the Turkanan people. So we're going to show this video here right now. embedded in my heel right now that's really bothering me but I can't take the time to carve it out of there. Turkana's uh, got a rough place. Here in Turkana it doesn't rain very often but when it does it floods big time but all of a sudden uh, there's a flood going through your area and you can't get to the airport or you can't get to the city or you can't get to your accommodations it's just uh, it's just crazy. But even through the difficulty, I know that we've made a difference and we are making a difference and we will make a difference in the future. It takes a lot of work. We have a great team of Kenyans here. They pour their heart and soul into drilling. It's a huge team effort. It takes people from Canada, the USA and Kenya. It takes a lot of people working together to make this happen. They've enabled us to do projects that no one else can do. We succeed where others have failed. We have the right tools, we have the right equipment. We could not have done it without the sponsor's help.
So Dave McElhinney with Nehemiah Construction and Josh and Chelsea, we support on a monthly basis. And one of the things that I want you to remember is that as you give into the ministry here, as you give into Living Branches Church, you're giving into these ministries as well. Because all the tithes and offerings that you give, we take that 10% and we put it towards those in the mission field. And we just want to encourage you that uh, for those who are here and those that are online, that these are ministries that without your help, they can't keep going. And they're having a lasting effect in people's lives. It's mirroring about trans transformation in people's lives. So just to let you know that that is one of the things that we do in, uh, in this church and how we support. Uh, before we go any farther, uh, I, was re I received a prayer request. And I just want to just pray real quick. Uh, Jim and Arsheen, uh, Jim fell a couple times, once last night and once this morning. And he is, he's hurting and so can we just take a moment and pray for him together? Father, we just lift up Jim. And I ask you, Lord, that you would just meet with him. Father, I'm sure there's so many questions and, and things that are going on in his life. But Lord, would you just let your presence be known? And Lord, the pain that he's experiencing right now, we're asking, Lord, for healing. We're asking, Lord, that you would touch him and restore him. And Father, we ask for Arshin too as she's at home and she's tending to him and, and working alongside. Lord, we just pray for strength for her because she's pretty tired right now. And we ask, Lord, would you touch her and strengthen her today? We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So this, uh, this morning we are going on with our series that we have been talking about. And our series is Surprising the World. And this whole time of surprising the world, we wanted to talk about, uh, or what we have been talking about is one, is that our lives would be questionable. How questionable? How are we living our lives in the world around us? And then the last one was inviting people around our table, inviting those around us to come and part, be a part of our lives so that they can see the difference within our lives. And so this morning we're going on and surprising the world. And our, the, the scripture that we're going to be going to is Romans chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. Now as you turn to that, uh, just a question. And this is the question. Have you ever been in a situation where you've been called upon but didn't have the answer? Have you ever been there? You know, I remember, and maybe it's cut so deep in me that the wound has been there, but I remember in school when I was asked to give an answer, and I was not prepared and uh, really felt silly because I didn't know. And then there's been other times when all of a sudden you've been asked to step up and to say something, and as a pastor, so often you get, you're asked to step in and, and greet people or, or even to give a message. Uh, there was one time I remember we were invited to a wedding. We weren't told it was a wedding, and we got there, and there was five pastors there, and nobody knew it was a wedding and kind of thought, well, they said this. They said, well, there's five pastors, so we knew that if one didn't show up, there'd be lots of other ones. And I went, oh my, thank you very much. Could you imagine going to a place and, and sitting in a restaurant, and all of a sudden it's a wedding. And then they turn around and say, will you perform this wedding? You know, you, you got to be prepared. Guys, you have to be prepared for these things. You know, it doesn't feel good when you're not prepared. It kind of throws you for a little, and you just, and, and what is it that, that comes in your heart right then is fear, right? All of a sudden, oh, no, what do I say? And your mind goes blank. Have you ever been there? Yeah, I've been there. And, and it's, it's not always a good thing. And I can't think of anybody who enjoys being unprepared, being put on the spot. And there's something uniquely painful about finding yourself in a situation that you're not equipped for and so how do we do this as we walk through surprising the world scripture tells us that we ought to be ready in season and out of season that we ought to be prepared to give the reason for the hope that lies within us 
And one of the questions that we come down to when we talk about uh, talking about the gospel, so often people say, oh, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to, how to go about this. But you see, what we want to do this morning is we want to talk about and to consider how do we answer people when they ask us about why we do things or how our lives are working. So before we do, we're going to go to Romans chapter 1 and we're going to start reading in verse 1 and we're going to go through to verse 6. And it says this, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called as an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. If you, were to, if you are like me, and I know some people don't, but I like to underline things in my Bible because it highlights it. And this is what, it, what I like. is I, I've underlined this. Set apart for the gospel of Christ, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was a descendant of David according to the flesh and was appointed to be a powerful to be the powerful Son of God according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. Through him we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the Gentiles, including you who, were all, who are also called by Jesus Christ. So how do we go about, how do we, tell, how do we deal with this question on what's going on. Why are you living the way you live? Tell me what about this hope that you have in your life. And I'm going to tell you the very first thing. And, and I know this, is, this may be very simple. But here's the first point. Tell them about Jesus. Do you know how complicated that is? It's not. But so quickly, we think we have to have come up with this, this great theological answer. We have to come up with something. And we need to understand that our calling is just tell them about Jesus. There is a, a, a story or, or a, a joke that is, was talked about, about a, a pastor or even, a, and we could even use a, 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 a Sunday school teacher who stood in front of their class and and they asked the kids to, for the name of the little creature that lives in trees. And there was a pause. And then they went on and says, it, eat, it eats nuts. And there's still a pause. It's gray, still nothing. Has a long bushy tail, and still nothing. It jumps from branch to branch. And gathers and flip, chatters and flips its tail when it's excited. And still, nothing was said. All of a sudden, this little boy sticks up his hand. And, and they sighed with relief and say, okay, so what is it? What type of animal? And, and the little boy said this, it sure sounds like a squirrel. But I know the answer is Jesus. You see, <laughs> we, we get to the place where where the Sunday school answer is always Jesus, but can I tell you, this is the answer to the people's questions that are always around us. We're not talking about a squirrel. We're talking about Jesus, the one who has made a difference in your life and my life. The church has often told Christians that they need to preach the gospel. How many have ever heard that? Preach the gospel. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Have you heard that? Come on now. You guys are here. I can see you. You got to lift up. Okay, thank you for those hands. For the other ones who don't have, okay, we're going to get you sooner or later. But you know what? You hear the words. You got to tell the, preach the gospel. But what does it actually mean to preach the gospel? The words in, of Paul in Romans chapter 1, Paul says this, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. Paul describes himself as one who is set apart for the gospel. His life was made holy. It was, had a purpose. It was dedicated to God to, for the preaching or the declaration of the gospel. And what is it the gospel that, that he, he talked about? And this is what he said as he continued. The gospel 
he promised or God promised beforehand through his prophet, prophets in the Holy Scripture regarding his son who, is, who as to his earthly life was a descendant of David. So what is it about the gospel? It's a message about Jesus who was number one a descendant of David and who through the spirit of holiness was appointed the son of God. So it talks about who by, by the spirit who was appointed uh, under holiness, he lived his life holy before men. And by his resurrection from the dead. So the sole message of the gospel is Jesus, who came from heaven, lived on this earth as a holy, as a righteous person, and was, and was crucified, was buried, rise, rose again on the third day. And through Jesus Christ our Lord, through him we have received grace and apostleship. So what is the message of the gospel? According to this passage, the gospel is the story of Jesus. His credentials as the Son of God. His physical descent from David. His validation of the, by the Spirit of God through his resurrection and from the resurrection from the dead. The Spirit of God validated not just the, through the resurrection, but through His holiness, through His life, through all that Jesus did. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And Jesus went about healing, and He did things that other people couldn't figure it out. He spoke as one with authority, and He had, that, he had power in His speaking, not like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You see, the message of Jesus is all about who Jesus is. So the, the gospel, the gospel is good news. The gospel is the good news of the kingdom of God. And along with that, Jesus the Messiah. If we're going to talk about the gospel, if we're going to have a reason to give to people and we're to called to talk about the gospel, we're called to speak about Jesus, that he came from heaven. And that the kingdom of God was present at the very beginning. That in Genesis chapter 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. He had a purpose and a plan for the earth. So that men and women, those who were made, could have a relationship with him. They could walk clearly with him. It was a message that Jesus was the one who would become the Messiah. The one who would pay the price for all men. The good news is the good news of salvation. The gospel is the good news of salvation and the forgiveness of sin through Jesus Christ. Through his suffering death on the cross, his burial and resurrection, he is exalted to the right hand of God and he will soon return. The good news of the gospel or the, go the gospel is about Jesus who came and because of sin, we understand that God designed the world to be well, to be perfect, and to have, be a place where people could have relationship. But because of sin, because of our rebellion, because of our turning away from God and saying we want to do it our own way, we want to live our own life, that's called sin. And it puts us into a place separated from God and in brokenness. And people try to find ways of, of having a right relationship with God in so many different ways. They look to religion. They look to, uh, to drugs and alcohol. They look to education. They look to, to their partner. They look to, to things in this earth. They look for ways to satisfy this part that's in each one of us. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every last person, even you who sit here, have all sinned, and we've all fallen short. And it says in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. You see, the gospel is about Jesus coming so that we can have eternal life. And not just the fact that we're going, we can have eternal life that in this time, but he also, we also tell the story that Jesus not just came to die and rise again and go to heaven, but he is coming again. And this story is so easy for each one of us. For all of you who have been in the church for a no number of years, you know the story. But why is it so quickly that we forget when we're asked? And I think it's because we just don't keep reminding and just keep that in, in, in remembrance. 
The message or the gospel is the message of the grace of God for those who turn to him. This message of the gospel goes to all men and women and children and is offered freely because you see Jesus died for all sin. And when people would turn and ask for, for, their forg for forgiveness, to receive the forgiveness from Christ, they can be saved and that they can have God's grace. They can be able to walk this earth free from the, the power of sin and death. They can be free. And those of you who are watching, if you don't know Jesus, you can be free today. Because Jesus came and died for you. You see, every time Paul talked about the gospel, everywhere he went, right from Jerusalem all the way through into Turkey and, and into Greece and, and all through Rome, he declared the gospel. He spoke about these things. And he spoke the gospel in these terms. And actually, if actually in Acts chapter 13, verses 16 to 39, is one of the examples, and we're not going to take the time to read it, but he talks about the gospel. And even when he doesn't have as much place, space to talk about it, just like in Romans chapter 1, he just said, this is what it is. He told the story of Jesus so quickly. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 8, Paul speaks to Timothy, he says, Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel. What did Paul say was the gospel? Jesus Christ came from heaven, died and rose again so that you could have eternal life. So when we preach the gospel, we're preaching Jesus openly, what he did and what he accomplished. We need to become more familiar with the message of the gospel. And it's the message of the gospels. Actually, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it's all there. And as believers, we need to immerse ourselves in the message and the story of Jesus. Because it's that story, it's that message that we bring. For in, it says in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, this message that he gave, because it is the power of God unto salvation. If we are not aware then of what the message of the gospel is, we are going out unprepared. And what was it that we said at the beginning? How many of you have ever been asked to say something and you weren't prepared? See, that's the, that's the scary part if we're not prepared. And this is where we need to come. Michael Frost again refers to, his, to us needing to be marinated in the gospel so that we can share any part of the story as the occasion calls for. So when we don't know the message of Jesus and all that he has done, we find ourselves unprepared for when we are asked what the hope, why we have this hope in our lives. When we speak about the message of uh, or the gospel, message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we're declaring the power of Jesus. Now, before we go on to the second point, and, and again, it's very simple. We've got another video I want you to show. I want to show you, and it's called the Three Circles of Evangelism. And hopefully, we can get that on there. So we live in this world, and it's characterized by brokenness. We don't have to look very hard to see there are things like disease, disasters, wars. There's a lot of pain in this world, but this is not God's original design. God has a perfect design. And the way that we have gotten ourselves into brokenness is through something that the Bible calls sin. Sin is turning away from God's design and pursuing our own way. And that leads us to brokenness. Brokenness eventually leads us to death. And this death will separate us from God forever. But God doesn't want us to stay in brokenness. So he's made a way out. And that way is Jesus. Jesus comes and he enters into our brokenness. And the death that we deserve for pursuing brokenness, Jesus takes our place and dies on a cross. And his body is broken for us. And three days after he dies, he rose from the dead. And he made a way out of brokenness. And people try many things to get out of brokenness. Things like religion. Things like success or relationships, education or drugs and alcohol. But none of these things can get us out of brokenness. The only way out is Jesus. 
And if we turn from our sin and believe that Jesus died for us and rose from the dead, we can leave brokenness and grow in a relationship with God and pursue his design. And more than that, we can go. We can be sent just like Jesus back into brokenness to help others come through him to pursue God's design. Now, there's two types of people in the world. There are people that are pursuing God's design, and there's people that are still in brokenness. We have to ask ourselves, where are we? So, where do you think you are? This word about preaching the gospel. Now the second point is this. Is don't focus on church. Focus on the purpose. Theologian David Bosch once wrote. At its heart the gospel is news about God's action and his reign. Not his institution. Let me read that again. The gospel is news about God's action and his reign, not about his institution. We often fall into a trap of wanting to tell everybody about how great our church is or all the programs that's going on. We can get into that and start talking about the church. Or we can get into the place where a person starts to talk to us about all the things, all the bad things that the church has done. Oh, you remember the Alamo? Not the Alamo, but you know what I mean. <laughs> you know, they always talk about, oh, the church did this, the church did this, all oh, the church. And we are so tempted to try and defend the church. Can I tell you this? Don't get caught into that trap. But instead, start to talk about what Jesus did. Start talking about what Jesus had done in your life. Instead of long-winded speech on our church programs or defending the actions of other Christians, let's try to focus rather on sharing how Jesus changed our life. What did Jesus do in your life? Now, if any of you have remember Rudy and you've sat down and you've talked with Rudy, you will also find out how quickly he will tell you about what happened in his life and how God had come in and helped him. In fact, it's been even now in, this, in the hospital room where he went into this hospital room and, and there was one nurse that was very hard and she, she came in and Rudy started to talk to her about what Jesus did. And before she left, and it was only a couple minutes before she left, she was in tears. Because you see, when we tell what Jesus has done in our lives, it has effect because you know what? Other people face it. While I was on the streets, I talked with an individual, and I was able to tell them what, what happened in my life, on how I was always searching for acceptance, searching for someone to accept me. And I found that I, Jesus at one time came and he said to me, he didn't come physically, he didn't speak to me audibly, but he did say this, I've accepted you as you are. You see, I had to know that God accepted me. And the first thing that came out of their mouth was this, how can I have that? You see, there's a, it hit the cord within their lives that they too have been looking for love in all the wrong places. And this is where we come down to, folks, as we just talk about what did Jesus do in our lives. Mark chapter 5 and verse 19. In fact, let me just read that story to you. Mark chapter 5. Let me see, make sure I have that. Mark chapter 5. And it talks about a man who was, uh, he was possessed by a number of demons and Jesus came across and and when he saw Jesus, verse 6, when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and knelt down before him and he cried out in a loud voice, what do you have to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high? I beg you before God, don't torment me, for he, is told, for he told him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. 
And this man was delivered from this unclean spirit. And, they, and uh, Jesus was the, the men who tended the, the, uh, tended the pigs where the demons went to, went and reported in a town, verse 14, reported it in the town and the countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. They came to Jesus and saw the man who had been demon-possessed sitting there, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it described it to them, described to them what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs. Then they began to beg him to leave, leave their region. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged him earnestly that he might remain with him. Jesus did not let him, but told him, Go home to your people and report to them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. The point is this. You don't have to have a theological training. You don't have to uh, have gone to Bible school. You don't have had to have read through the New Testament or the whole Bible. All you need to do is have Jesus touch your life and then you can share. This is what Jesus did. You don't have to have all the answers because there's so many people, there's so many questions that they'll ask. And you know, I don't know the answers, but I do know this. This is what I was before. And Jesus came. He touched me. And here I am today. This is what God's done in my life. He set me free. And I'm just telling you, this same Jesus who did it for me can do it for you. This is the message of the gospel. We live now in the light of the future, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Our lives have purpose, not just for the purpose of going to church, but the purpose to join God with the same message of reconciliation, that God was in Christ reconciling, bringing the world back into relationship with himself. Second Chronicles 5, or Second Corinthians 5, 18 and 19 says, Who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. And he has committed the message of reconciliation to us. I'm going to close with another story. And in the book, Surprise the World, Michael Frost tells the story of meeting a group of hardcore surfing enthusiasts and asking them who their favorite surfer was of all time. Now, obviously he was down around the place where surfers are going on. And, and what about here? You know, you can use this story, you can use a different analogy, but for this point, we'll just use this. They said it was the Florida surfer Kelly Slater who has been crowned the world surfing champion, a record 11 times, including five consecutive times from 1994 to 1998. He is the youngest at the age of 20 and the oldest at the age of 39 to win the title. When Michael asked them to tell them more about Kelly Slater, they, went, they just went bananas, overwhelming him with facts about Slater's life, where he grew up, what boards he used, which years he won the title, what movies and television shows he appeared in, which models and movie stars he dated, and on and on and on. They told him everything that they knew about this uh, surfer. So the question comes down to what if you or I were asked this question, tell me, what do you know about Jesus? What would you say? Michael Frost concluded this story this way, and he says, when we live questionable lives, people see our strange behavior and ask us about our motivations. And then we should be able to speak about Jesus the way surfers would speak about Kelly Slater, with energy, enthusiasm, and with reverence and awe, with delight and wonder. Can you imagine what it would be like if you were walking and people saw that and they asked you, what do you know about Jesus? 
Maybe you have, maybe during, during your time you've had this opportunity to be with your neighbor and you've had coffee with your neighbor and you've talked a little bit about your life and they said, tell me more about Jesus. What would you tell them? Are you prepared? And I pray that after today you will be prepared because as I end this morning, I want to bring a challenge. So those of you who are here, and I'm going to look at each one of you because this means you. Let me tell you. Put down your Bible. This means you. And I'm serious because what I'm asking for you is to do this for me. Whether it's on, and those are online, that means you too. I want to hear from you. Whether you're in England, which I know some of you are, and whether you're in the Philippines, which I know some of you are, I want you to do this for me. And this is what it is. I want you to take the time to write down the answer to this question. When did Jesus become more than a word to you? When was it that Jesus became more than a word to you? And what has taken place since that time? And what I'd like you to do is, is under that, I'd like you to just turn around and like you to write it out and email it to me. So if I was to go through with Facebook and look at all the engagements, that makes about 209 to 259 engagements every week. And if there's two people in each one, each one of these engagements, that would mean that I should be receiving close to 450 to 500 emails within this next week. And I'm serious. I want you to tell me because it's, this is what it is. That if you could write it out and you, could, and you could send it, then guess what? You have got a resource that now you can turn back to and say, when somebody comes and says, tell me about Jesus, you can tell them what Jesus has done in you. When Jesus became more than just a word. And if you want to go on and tell them the whole area of salvation, like those three circles of evangelism, I challenge you to go and look it up and memorize it. You know what? I've memorized it, as you could probably tell. And I don't use word for word. But I think it's so important that we are able to share with people about the message of Jesus and all that he came to do. So that is the, that's the point of where we are. So now, this morning, just as we've done in other weeks, I've invited Amy to come. And, and this morning, I want to invite you all to stand with me. So let's just all stand right now as Amy comes. And uh, what we want to do is I want you to just take a moment and I want you to say, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me this morning through this passage, through this message? What are you saying to me? What is it, Lord, that you're challenging me with? And how do I need to respond? You see, the responses can come because of fear and you say, oh, I'm afraid to even step out. God wants to speak to you and I would, I would even venture to say, he wants you to say, tell you to don't fear. God has not given you a spirit of fear. But if you would believe and trust God for the, to do the work, you just share and it's the Holy Spirit that does the rest. And then we want to ask you if there's anything that you have that you need prayer for. If there's anyone here that, that you need prayer this morning, I just want you to lift your hand. And if there's anybody that you know in your family or in your life, I want you to just lift up your hand. And, I just, and we just want to pray for you this morning. Amy and I are going to pray for you. So let's just keep your hands lifted and let's pray. Father, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that the message of the good news is not hard. Lord, so often we make it hard. And we get in the road. But you call us to just tell about Jesus. Tell them about what God has done in your life. And I pray for each one, whether here or online and watching later on this week, I just pray for them, 
that they would take that challenge to write out those words. When did Jesus become more than just a word? And Father, I pray for those whose hands are lifted today, who are facing, whether in their own lives or in those that, that are around them, their family members or others. Lord, we pray for them. And I ask you, Lord, by your Holy Spirit, that you would work within their lives, that, Father, you would show yourself powerful, bring healing, bring strength, bring what they need, because you know where their heart is. And we ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing one more song, and then we'll be dismissed.